Uh, you guys caught me. I'm wearing my glasses or my readers. There we go. It's a product of uh, law school being a CPA. It's crazy stuff. Okay. So welcome. Uh, this Today, we're going to be going through some accounts receivable questions with you. Uh, we've got an aging. Uh, we're going to figure out what bad, bad debt expense, write-offs, and then the recovery of accounts previously written off. So let's go ahead and get to it. So right over here. We have YYZ have the following aging of its accounts receivable as of December 31st, 2029. And we've got basically an amount, percentage uncollectible. And then we've got assuming here that the debit balance of 10 grand, prepare the journal entry to report bad debt expense. Alternatively, assuming that the allowance for doubtful accounts at a beginning credit balance of 42, prepare the journal entry uh, for both scenarios, prepare the balance sheet assumption for AR. Before we get to here, let's go ahead and take a look at a publicly traded company that does have some accounts receivables. And this will be our friends at Meta Platforms. Okay. So when I come over here and I look at the quarterly report of Meta, and this is Facebook, Grandpa, Instagram, and everything else, we're going to see accounts receivable net. What does exactly does that mean? Well, let's find out. So if we say accounts receivable, okay. And then over here, maybe we look over here and maybe let's go look for the allowance for, oh, okay, doubtful accounts. Well, it's not there, hold on. Just give me a moment, I'm gonna look for a prior one because. Yeah, to go back in a DeLorean, had to make that go 88 miles per hour. And guess what? Uh, yeah, I'm not Eric Stoltz and I'm not Michael J. Fox, but we're here. So um, taking a look at this over here for accounts receivable, this is for Facebook. Grandpa, uh, I'm not a grandfather yet. Uh, at least I don't think I am. Uh, so accounts receivable, uh, net of allowances of 301 and 229 uh, as of December 30th, 2019 and December 31st, 2018. So what this means is that if we were to go through and look at the accounts receivable, so for here, for Meta, as of 9-30-19 and 12-31-18, So their accounts receivable net is going to be seven point six billion or seven seven six seven three. And then over here, this is going to be seven five eight seven. This is accounts receivable net. Now what we have, though, to get to that, though, is we have an allowance for doubtful accounts. And our allowance for doubtful accounts was 301 and 229. So that means that the accounts receivable prior to any sort of adjustments would be 7 7.9 billion less the allowance is what's getting me to my accounts receivable net. On our balance sheet, right, when we're showing our balance sheet, we do not show the gross amount of accounts receivable. Rather, what we're showing our investors, remember, we're preparing our financial statements for our investors. We're focused on a lot of what we're focused on is reporting on the past uh, to basically because we know what's happened in the past and we're recording those transactions. So, but when we're showing our balance sheet as of a certain date, what accounts receivable kind of represents similar to inventory, right? This is when we're looking at the lower of cost or market, right? We need to show that, oh, okay, over here that, you know, these iPhones are not worth what we once paid for them. Similarly, if there's accounts receivable that we think will have a problem collecting, someone goes bankrupt, something bad happens, 
I need to make an allowance for uncollectible accounts. When we're going through and doing this, we take a balance sheet approach. So on my balance sheet, I'm going to show accounts receivable net. So let's go through and take a look at this particular question. So basically, what does my balance sheet look like? Well, over here, I have accounts receivable of 1.2 million. And this is as of 1231.29. I'm going to have less my allowance for doubtful accounts. And this is going to give me accounts receivable net or what I expect to go through and collect from my receivables. So as I look at this right over here, what amount should be in my allowance? Well, when we're doing an aging of accounts receivable, what does that mean? It means we are separating our receivables as current, meaning that it's not past due. It's one to 30 days past due, 31 to 60 days, 61 to 90, 91 to 120, and over 120. These are management estimates in terms of what they can collect. They've made a credit sale. It's where the accounts receivable is coming from. But sometimes these may not be collectible. So if I take the amount times the percentage that is uncollectible, what I'm going to get over here is I'm going to get 5,000, 2,000, 4,200, 9,000, and then 93,750. So my total allowance for doubtful accounts, meaning what I don't expect to collect, is going to be 293,950. So when I'm asked to do a balance sheet presentation, this is kind of where I want to start meaning that, oh, what is it, what is my balance sheet going to look like? And if I have an aging, I'm going to go through, take each one of the amounts, multiply it by the percentage uncollectible. Remember, I have to give you that information if you're taking my class. If you're doing this in real life, you're going to be management. You're going to basically look at past history of collections, say, okay, can we go through and collect this? But this is what we're going through and doing. So coming right back over here, let's go ahead and now take a look at these other parts. So my total AR was 1.2 million or 1,235. The amount I do not expect to collect is 293,950. So my accounts receivable net or what I'm going to be showing on my balance sheet is going to be 94150. Remember what we're showing our balance sheet, it's what we expect to collect. So after the allowance, so coming over here, assuming that the allowance for doubtful accounts had a beginning debit balance of 10,000, prepare the journal entry to record bad debt expense for the year ended 1231.29. And then this question has a different scenario. If it was a credit balance of 42,000, prepare the journal entry. So. What I'm going to do is I'm effectively looking at my allowance for doubtful accounts. So my allowance for doubtful accounts is what we call a contra asset account, right? This has a negative balance, right? It's not a liability, rather it's reducing an asset, very similar to accumulated depreciation. So this is a contra asset account reducing, reduces AR to what we expect to collect. Okay. The way I always want to do these problems is I always want to figure out the ending balance and the allowance for doubtful account first. So this is going to have a credit balance. Why is it a credit? Because it's going to be reducing the amount of the asset on the balance sheet. So now that we have this, what we can effectively now go through and do is work through these scenarios. Now, assuming that my balance had a debit balance of 10,000, right? When it comes to looking at these questions for bad debt expense, 
bad debt expense is always my final step. First step when I'm dealing with allowance questions is one, compute the ending balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts. Second, any write-offs of AR, uh, any amounts previously collected, previously written off, and then four, input the beginning balance. And last, bad debt expense. What I need to do to balance the T account. So over here, to balance this T account, I'm going to need a total of 303,950. Remember, I'm going to use this to trick you if you're taking my class. Because over here, well, this is not going to be 283,950. Why not? Because 283,950 minus 10,000 is 273. So this needs to be 393,950. 390, sorry, wow, 303,950. Wow, Bennett. So coming over here, 303,950 minus the 10,000, excuse me, my ending balance. Let's go through and do the next one. So alternatively, right over here, basically assume that I had a beginning credit balance of 42,000. Now remember, the ending balance is exactly the same. Now for this one, how do I go from 42 to 293? Well, I'm gonna need an adjustment over here for 251,950. That's what I go through and do. So. To answer, go through and now do the adjusting journal entry, right? So this over here, these over here are my adjustments. So over here, we've got 1231.29, 1231.29, same data, different opening balances. Over here, I'm crediting the allowance for doubtful accounts. I'm going to be doing this for 303,950. For every credit, I need a debit. This is going to be my debit to bad debt expense. How do I record my expenses? I record my expenses with a debit, ERDC. So I'm going to go ahead and basically use the same journal entry formatting. And I'm going to go ahead now and record this part right over here. So that's how I go through and basically handle this type of question where I'm given an aging of accounts receivable, a beginning debit or a beginning credit balance, and I'm asked to basically prepare uh, essentially the journal entries. So let's go through over here and look at our next question. And I think I'm going to have to end it right here, but I will come back and we'll do another part for this next question. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.